Hello everyone, my guest today is Sharam Fladgermercer. He is the CEO and founder of a company called AirPR, technology solution to measure the impact of PR. He was an EIR at Shasta Ventures focused on consumer internet and the social graph. Before joining, Sharam was a senior associate at Sierra Ventures focused on consumer internet enterprise software like cloud computing and virtualization, and mobile. He served on the board as Makara, which sold to Red Hat, and Touch Commerce, which sold to Nuance. All right, Sharm, are you ready to take us to the top? Oh, let's rock. All right, you've been about around the block a few times. What do you like more, the VC stuff or doing your own thing? Uh, both have their uh, <laughs> interesting parts. It just kind of depends on which stage of your life you, uh, you're at. VC is unbelievable. You get some of those brilliant entrepreneurs pitching you on ideas you would never have think of, yep. uh, never have thought of. But uh, um, it also is, a, is a, I feel, a job that uh, um, maybe is a better fit later in life um, when uh, you've had uh, enough experience where uh, you're, as opposed to the startup world where you're working 120 hour weeks. Uh, you just don't have 120 hour weeks in, in VC world. So if you're ever going to take a shot at a startup, do it when you're younger. Uh, VC seems like a better job uh, after you've uh, been successful doing a couple of companies. All right. Tell us about Air PR. What's the business model and what do you do? Air PR is a platform to measure the impact of public relations for the first time and to help drive more of the right press, if you will. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder uh, of the company, so I uh, do a lot of things and uh, fill fill the gaps where uh, where I find them in the company. And what's the business model? Is it monthly recurring pay as you go, or some other model? Yeah, it's a SaaS product that we charge on an annual set, uh, annual um, or two year, three year, multi year contract, and uh, um, we work with early stage companies all the way up to Fortune 500 businesses. And so there's a wide range of companies that uh, spend uh, money and effort and time and PR, um, but they're not certain how it affects their business. And they want to be able to look at the results to say, hey, we should spend our time over here uh, rather than what we have been doing that isn't generating uh, the results that uh, drive the business. So generally speaking, what would you say the average customer pays you per year? Uh, it varies. It uh, We're right around the $50,000, $60,000 a, a year, okay. um, but it depends on the customer. So you're mid-market pushing enterprise, right? Yeah, it, it, it depends. I mean, we have our our enterprise deals that I was talking about, the Fortune 500 and Fortune 1000. Uh, they're paying us well in six figures. And then yep, we have yep. uh, uh, we have tiny early stage startups that are paying us much less than that. And because we charge based on amount of data we capture, uh, which is number of news articles. And so a startup is going to obviously not have that much press compared to a large Fortune 500 company. And so they pay clearly different amounts. Mm hmm. Interesting. Um, do you also help them get the articles? So you're kind of feeding your own pricing model? Um, we Once we set the model of the price, uh, we don't change it, even if they double the amount of press. So companies love working with us um, as soon as they can, rather than much later when they have a lot more press. But we help them figure out who they should talk to that's most likely to drive the business. Um, and there are PR agencies that will help them broker the relationship. If you them. if you give them unlimited uh, like uh, unlimited mentions right per your pricing model, you obviously take leverage away from your ability to drive expansion revenue. So, what levers do you have to drive expansion revenue if you have that one metric unlimited? Uh, we really focus on um, a couple of things. One, being able to uh, um, scale past uh, just tracking coverage, for example, in the United States. So we'll bucket it that way: unlimited coverage in the United States. But if you want to go internationally, for example. Um, or if you want to have other um, other modules that we uh, that we provide, so out of the box we'll provide online uh, online coverage. But if someone, for example, wants print coverage as well, um, then we charge additional for that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, give me more of the backstory. When did you launch the company? Uh, we launched it. It was just an idea in my head in uh, 2010. I launched the company in 2011. Raised a seed round in 2012 and then raised our A around in uh, seven days in 2013. And how much total have you raised? Uh, we've raised $10 million total uh, and our Series B is the most recent. And when you talked about your Series A, you, you mentioned you went out of your way to mention seven days. I'm curious why. Oh, uh, just because uh, fundraising can be a, quite of a bear um, as a entrepreneurs talk about. And so um, we figured out different ways uh, in which it scaled the business pretty quickly. You can actually raise capital. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, but when you say seven days, it's kind of your way of saying, look, we're healthy. We did it so fast, right? So, so what enabled you to do it so fast? And, and what per, was your lead investor, one of these VC firms that you already were an EIR at? 
Uh, great question. So two parts to that. The first one is the lead investor was not a firm I was a PIR at, um, but they, uh, they were the, kind of got a first look at what we were doing. Um, and in terms of the trend, we basically, we showed them a product at the time um, that worked that actually measured the impact of PR. And mm -hmm. back then in 2013, I mean, that was just unfathomable. Like, mm -hmm. Nothing like that existed. And so when we showed them that it worked and showed them the, the, the prototype of it, um, it was pretty quick to, uh, to generate some interest. And uh, what have you scaled to today in terms of total customers using you? Uh, so we don't address the total number of customers or total amount of revenue, but, uh, we have a wide range of customers and a lot of really big brands that use it all the way down to nonprofits. Mm. So. Are, are we talking, give me a general range. I mean, are we talking 10 clients or a thousand or 10,000? Yeah. I mean, we just don't talk about the total number of clients, but, uh, it's a wide range. Well, why specifically don't you talk about it? Well, for a lot of the reason why a lot of companies are, um, they generally don't disclose revenue amounts. And yeah. so Sharon, have you, have you listened to the podcast before? I have not listened yeah. to the podcast. So I've had about a 1200 B2B SaaS CEO, CEOs on, they've almost all shared that even if it's not a specific revenue number for competitive reasons, they at least share some range. And the reason is about 5 million people listen to the show. So, I mean, you do yourself a disservice by not somehow articulating the kind size of company you're working with and whether you're a, a high touch, but low volume kind of play, or you're a, you know, a low touch self-serve model, but high volume. Can you give us some direction there? Yeah, no, I, I totally appreciate the question. And if I was on the flip side, uh, that I'd want to know the answer too. I mean, the simple equation is you multiply the the answer I gave in terms of our average revenue by the number of customers, and then you get our revenue. So that's, well, that's why, why I say, give me a range of customer, right? So you could say, you could say a huge range. You could say between 110,000, that leaves plenty of vagueness. Perfect. There you go. We have between 100 and 10,000. Perfect. Good. So between 100 and 10,000 customers versus a model like a constant contact that has hundreds of thousands of paying customers, but not an enterprise model where there's only 10 customers that make up, you know, 100 million in ARR. Fair enough. Good. So walk us through how you've scaled the company. So back when you released the first product back in 2013, what's been the number one way you've acquired customers? Yeah, so um, generally it's been word of mouth and our own PR efforts, uh, probably unsurprisingly. Um, we've, we've had fairly limited marketing, uh, back then, uh, much more recently though, we're having more of a marketing presence. We threw our first conference, uh, last year with, uh, Jeffrey Moore as one of the keynote speakers, uh, author, author of Crossing the Chasm, as well as Andy Cunningham, who was the first PR person for Steve Jobs and has launched a variety of different, uh, categories in the industry. Um, so we're starting to spend more of our effort on marketing now. Uh, but historically when we first launched, it was a lot of, uh, uh, word of mouth and introductions. What are you doing? So when people say measure their PR, I mean, how are you actually doing that? How are you closing a loop on that? Which ultimately then backs up the value of why people pay you, right? Because they can see the attribution and it validates some things internally. Sorry, can you repeat the, the question? The question is how specifically are you tying a value to a mention in a press article and having, oh, it, be, and having it be substantive to validate people paying you anything at all? Yeah, so what we're able to do is we can tie into... Um, how many people after having read an article will, for example, come to Salesforce's website um, after reading that article about Mark Benioff or about Salesforce, and then ultimately um, go from there to signing up for a demo of the marketing cloud or applying for a job. Um, and so being able to do that on the B2B side or on the B2C side all the way down to did someone sign up for a particular product uh, or purchase a particular product. So we tie it from the original article that the PR helped drive down to uh, uh, an action or an engagement that matters. Um, every customer, I imagine, has a different uh, engagement metric that matters. How do you build a piece of tech on the back end that works no matter what that metric is? Yeah, I mean, w uh, there's a couple pieces to that. So the first one is, is um, the tech doesn't need to, um, because we're not, going through the process of integrating into their custom systems. We don't have to worry too much about, um, you know, someone's tech looking like this and another one's tech looking like that. Um, the system, you know, if we integrate into a Google Analytics, for example, um, Google formats the, the data in a particular way. And so that allows us to build a system that then can integrate into multiple companies' uh, data platforms. Okay, but the general is the general action you're tracking views to that Salesforce opt-in page, or do you go deeper? Can you actually tie to a checkout so to close the loop? Yeah, we could tie it all the way down to a checkout to close. You that do loop. okay, and are, are do you use some kind of tagging mechanism for that, or does your tech actually go that deep into each individual customer's funnel? 
uh, we can have our own tech go that deep, or they generally these companies will have a Google Analytics or an Adobe Analytics, for example, that will go down that deep and through their own funnel. So if we just tie into one of their web analytics solutions, then uh, they usually will have the tech already there. Back in 2015, you made a pretty important shift, I believe, when you decided to sell your PR marketplace to the CHR group. Um, why did you start as a marketplace and what, uh, what drove the decision to, to kind of sell that off? Yeah, so it's a great question. One of the things that we did when we were coming up with our vision initially was we were looking at challenges in uh, a variety of different spaces. And PR was one of the ones that didn't have a lot of technology in the first place. The big challenge that uh, entrepreneurs and CEOs would face is they couldn't find great PR people in their minds. And when they found them, they didn't know um, the effort that they were generating, how much it affected their business. So there's a host of challenges. And so the first thing we built um, as part of the vision was a marketplace. And the more and more uh, people we talked to would say, hey, this marketplace is really interesting, but I don't always need to hire a new person. Uh, but what I always need is if I'm spending any amount of money on this, I need a way to figure out what's working, what's not, so I could be more effective. Um, and so when we built the second part of the model, the analytics piece, we realized there was a huge opportunity there. And so it was actually all the way back to when we raised our seed round. Um, I, uh, I ended up raising it off of a, uh, showing them a PowerPoint deck, showing them the, the working product in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, but I actually drew up on a whiteboard how we were going to measure the impact of PR and said, if you're going to invest in the company, bet that we're going to be doing and building this product. And this is what's going to be the focus of why we're raising capital and not the marketplace. It was sure. just a tough decision um, to sell the marketplace in 2015 because it was doing really well and scaling and generating revenue. And, um, uh, and the, the analytics product was so new still. Um, pre -re yeah. Was the analytics product pre-revenue? It wasn't pre-revenue, but it was pretty close. Um, it, it wasn't pre-revenue, but it was pretty close you to it. You could say less than a million. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was not big. Yeah. Let's put it that way. So it's a tough it's a tough decision when you're selling something that is a um, when you're selling something that has uh, that has revenue um, for something that is uh, is much smaller, but your betting is gonna is just gonna grow a lot faster. Yeah, I'm trying and to figure out where you got that where you got the confidence to do that. Your answer will obviously be, well, I just believed in analytics and I took the bet, but there there was more rational thinking there. Whether it was you had cash buffer in the bank to do it, I mean, to sell off a big chunk of your business like that and totally pivot to analytics when it was basically brand new. I mean, that's courageous. Yeah, well, thanks. I appreciate that. It was it's tough. I mean. Part of it is having a really supportive board that uh, looks at that and says, we believe that you're going to make the right decision, so we support you in, in, in that endeavor. Um, and part of it is, at the beginning, we said this was the plan. So even though when they invested, they agreed this is what we're going to do, when push comes to shove and you look at something that has revenue and is scaling and then you decide you're going to sell that, um, you get to really see what uh, how your investors believe in the initial vision that you pitch them. So everyone's quite supportive. But yeah, it's I, I'm certain it's a hard struggle that everybody faces um, when you have two products that uh, that um, you know when you're a company that's not a Fortune 500 business trying to sell two products is very difficult. And you really have to you really don't have time as a as a company to sell even one of them, let alone multiple products. All right, Sharon, let's wrap up here with the famous five one-word answers here. Number one, besides Crossing the Chasm, what's your favorite business book? Ah, uh, Let's say uh, Getting to Aha by Andy Cunningham. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? CEO that I'm following or studying right now? I would say Jay Fulcher. Number, CEO. I believe, too, he's on your board, right? Yeah. Yeah. CEO Jay. Of Jay Fulcher. Uh, number three, uh, is there a favorite, on, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool for growing the business? Um, besides ours, I'm a fan of HubSpot. Okay. Number three, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Eight. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kiddos? I am now married. Now married. Good. And no kids yet? No kids. All right. And how old are you, Sharon? I'm 35. All right. Last question. Take us back 15 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, my 20 year old self knew, let's see, I'd say probably the only difference is, uh, I would probably have pinged a couple, uh, CEOs that, that I would have no right to ping. And, 
uh, and ask them for a, a chief of staff job working underneath them. <laughs> there you guys have it from Sharon. He would have hunted for some of those bigger CEOs earlier and maybe asked for a chief of staff position just to learn faster. He launched Air PR back in 2010, raised, caught four or five million bucks, and then sold the marketplace in 2015, despite the analytics product doing, you know, not a lot of revenue yet. He has since scaled that. He has more than 100 customers on that platform, uh, paying more than 50 grand a year. So you can obviously do the math at a minimum. Uh, doing you listen you can give me a higher number but that's the minimum you gave me so that's what i have to use now it's uh, uh it's definitely higher than that <laughs> you, you're sure you're welcome to give me a higher minimum but that's what you're giving me as a minimum to use do you want to give me a higher number well let's put it this way um i wouldn't i wouldn't put out and again i'm not as familiar with your with your uh, podcast but i wouldn't promote sort of a revenue number of a of a company if it's below our our actual number so it's probably better to just not say a revenue number but you can let people sort of figure that out on their own no i like to do minimums i like to do minimums you know i i like hard data because when people come on and say we raise capital in 7 days i like to understand what they're actually saying when they say that and when you tie it back to data it cuts through any kind of weird, vague things. So I'll leave it as a minimum. And maximum, you said 10,000. People can figure out the rest by themselves. But I think your lessons have more weight by having a minimum. So you're doing more than that, having success. Analytics, part of the PR thing is taking off. You raise an additional 5 million in capital in 2016. So there's good investor confidence there. I'm rooting for you. And Sharon, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you for taking the time. And if you want to say an absolute minimum, you can say we have uh, about 5,000 customers. All right, fair enough. Appreciate you. Thank you. Take care.